Hello and welcome to the Unlucky Frog Gaming Podcast. You are joined by your two usual hosts here. We've got uh, Tom Mannering. Hello. And myself, Josh Hartley. How, how are we doing this week, Tom? Doing all right, mate. I'm doing all right. Uh, it's been a, been a slow week. Uh, we were kind of discussing pre-recording uh, how slow it's been. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, January. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Well, it's, it's not January anymore. No, we're into February now, but it's sort of it's been a typical like this time of year week for yeah. me, as in nothing's been going on. <laughs> yeah, nothing's nothing's really been happening personally or or in any other context, uh, even on the the gamer front, beyond the the kind of usual uh, treading water for want of a better word, and that's not a bad thing. Um, mm. But it's just not exciting, I suppose, for our eager listeners uh what about you have you had anything uh, anything going on no um not not too much i will uh i'm, I'm off to see a play tonight Ooh, very I, I can't mind if i yeah told you that yeah you didn't I'm off. tell me that i would have mocked you what are you going to see <laughs> i'm off to see a play called two okay. um the the it is uh, t- uh the two cast members in it are a couple that a few of us know um so uh, I am heading off there with a few friends later this evening, and nice. uh, I can't mind if I mentioned on the podcast. I have mentioned this to you that I was doing Dry January, and mm-hmm. of course, as as you have so rightly noted, it is not January anymore. So I'll enjoy an alcoholic beverage after said play. So you um, succeeded in uh, in Dry January then? Yes, of well course. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody does. That was very, very <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean that to be as de- to come across as defensive as it sounded. But <laughs> how dare you? How question. dare you, sir? <laughs> so I'm I'm not really a big uh, play person. Uh, I've seen like outside of like pantomimes when I was a kid. I think I have seen a grand total of one actual play in my in my adult life. One okay, sort of theatrical performance, and that was uh, I got. Tickets at Christmas. This is a few years ago. Tickets mm-hmm. one Christmas, uh, and it was a play that Zach Braff, uh, JD from Scrubs, yeah, had, had written and was performing in. And, and basically, my friend just got it for me, for me and her, because Zach Braff was in it. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to it, and I really enjoyed it. Right, but like, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to get too off topic here, but. I don't know how much you know about Zach Braff as kind of a writer and a director and things like that, but I've seen Garden State. He is not the light-hearted character he plays in scripts yeah. as a person, right? He's I kind of I kind of thought that might have been the case. Yeah. Is it a bit of a downer of it an was, evening? It's pretty dark. Like it was funny, <laughs> but dark funny. Like right. The, okay. The first scene of the play is him struggling to hang himself. And I was like, okay, that's the tone set. (laughs) This is not what I expected. And it is kind of played for laughs in inverted commas because he can't do it. You know, he keeps on like stumbling and things like that. And then like he trips and accidentally nearly hangs himself. And it's a whole thing. But Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was um, it it was weird. Uh, And yeah, it kind of I wouldn't say it put me off plays, but it kind of it kept me firmly rooted in the. I'm not sure I'm a play person. So, just so, so you say that's the only play you've ever seen. Did you not go see Panto when you were a kid? No, I said with the exception of Panto. Oh, I that. missed that bit. Sorry. Yeah. Right. So I saw I saw Panto. I've actually been. At, uh, I I don't want to talk about it too much because it's. Oh, I think we. I, I do. I uh, do now. <laughs> I was uh, in my late teens. Uh, I was in a play. I was in a musical uh, for a couple of weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. and the the Burnley Mechanics, uh, the the classiest of establishments. We did, yes, I think we did a two week run, if memory serves. It was mm-hmm. a long time ago, but that was kind of my 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 introduction to theatre because I wasn't really like a a drama kid uh, mm-hmm. when I was younger. Like I, that it was weird because at my school, like the two coolest groups of people were like your jocks in in American mm-hmm. terminology, your sports kids, 
and then the drama kids weirdly weren't like the bullied ones they were the cool ones mm-hmm. uh, and I, I was in neither of those uh, those cliques I was in the you know exiles uh, <laughs> the, the, the the smart nerdy mm-hmm. people that no one really wants to, to so- associate with mm-hmm. uh, which did me a disservice because I wasn't that smart either um, <laughs> That's, I'm sure that's not true, Tom. No, it's. it's I, I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable with where I was intellectually as a as a teenager. But yeah, I was in. Uh, I was in this musical performance, and it was it was Gilbert and Sullivan. Uh, so if anybody knows uh, classic uh, musicals, that's what it was. Uh, there's an episode of The Simpsons where uh, Sideshow Bob. Yeah, does a few. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember any of the titles of a Gilbert and Sullivan. I've never seen Gilbert and Sullivan. So I um, was in. It was actually it was a dual show, so there were two right. shows in the one uh, performance. I can't remember the first one. The first one was shorter, and it was like a a, a, a legal scene. It was a court scene, uh, and I can't remember the name of it. But mm-hmm. the second part, which was the majority of the show, which was was HMS Pinafore. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's. Yeah. And I recognise that one. Uh, so I was in my, my sailor's get-up and I was dancing around the stage with a broom. There are a few pictures that you will never see. Uh, I was just about... Uh, you beat me to it. I was yeah. going to call out to our listeners if anyone has... Video recordings would be perfect. <laughs> However, I will take pictures. If we have any pictures of Tom the Sailor, please send them in. They're out there. They are out there, but you'll never see them. I'll I'll hunt down anyone that has them before that happens. Uh, I've got completely <laughs> sidetracked. I know we said we're short on things to talk about this uh, this episode, but yeah, that was my uh, my one sort of uh, brief foray. Uh, and actually, in fairness, I, I really enjoyed it. Like, I did a mm. lot of amateur acting stuff when I was younger. Me and my friends made, like, films and stuff. And because my dad was into all that, he, he like, worked for the BBC mm. for a period and was in, like, some BBC shows and some films, uh, just as background stuff that kind of carried over, but I never kind of went anywhere with it uh, for any number of reasons. Uh, laziness being being one of the the crowning ones. <laughs> <laughs> ah, laziness, the enemy of everything. Yeah, yeah. there we go. I um, I'll, I'll I'll keep this brief. Uh, I, basically, I'm into theatre because a lot of my friends are into theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, so like. I like to be a good friend. I like to go support them what in, in what they're doing. So as a consequence, I end up going to see a lot of plays. But it's kind of through that, I've ended up having an interest, like being interested in it in my own right anyway. Um, and I used to, one of my former work colleagues, uh, we had a sh- shared interest in musical theatre and would joke like, we're, we're, we're one of 12 heterosexual men in the UK who liked musical theatre. That's not true, by the way. I'm sure that's not true. But um, um, if you ever get a chance to see Book of Mormon, it's so funny. Um, yeah. yeah. But you'll pay through the nose for it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's that's what I'm doing tonight. Let's let's get it on topic, though. Let's talk, uh, let, let's talk um, gaming stuff. This week, I have mostly been um, getting back. <laughs> why, why did that? Why did that make you laugh? This week, I have been mostly. <laughs> That's the energy I was going for. Yeah, I was going for. I can't even remember the name of the the guy from that skit from fast, uh, fast. It was the fast show. Yeah, but the guy had a name. I can't remember his name. Uh, yeah, this week I have mostly been building necrons. Um, I've been. Uh, I thought to myself, it's been a while since I've done hobby stuff, so kind of gave myself the the metaphorical like kick up the ass, and uh, I've got out a bunch of the kits that I've been wanting to build. I don't have anything that I can paint at the moment uh, because it is too cold to uh, do any priming outside, and that's not me like being precious about the temperature outside. It's too cold, and it will mess up with the spray can. And I'm not one of these people who's all right using a spray can indoors. Um, don't do that ever. <laughs> but um, so I thought, right, well, I can't do that. So what can I do? So I can build. I've got like a bunch of kits that are unbuilt. So I've made a start on some of them. So I've got uh, a, a Cryptarch built. I think it's a, a, a Technomancer. It's the one with like the the sort of little spider with it, and he's leaping through the air. Um, 
it's a cool kit. Uh, and I've got some Immortals built as well. So, But next up, I've got some Lich Guard. And then I've got some like big fun kits to build as well. I've got like the one of the flyers, the Doom Scythe to build. I've got a big walker to build. I've got uh, another large spider thing. They're like the spiders, the Necrons. I'm going um, to put you on the spot. Uh, did you ever build and paint the resin guy I got you for your birthday donkeys ago? It might be Christmas, actually. I think it was Christmas. What what uh, what army was he for? The fancast Necron dude. No, he's still he's still on the he's on the list he's on the list. But I'm thank you for reminding me. Yeah, he, can't, he, can't he always it. does this though. So you know, you can generally um, assume I'm shaking my head in disappointment when Josh is talking. Uh, it's funny actually because I was I was chatting to Will just before I came on to talk to you actually, uh, and we were saying about hobby stuff, and I was saying I've not actually done any hobby stuff. Uh, myself for donkeys way before the move at least uh, mm-hmm. and I was thinking like oh, I've actually got Saturday free this week I might sit down and crack out a few of the kits because like many many hobbyists you tend to find you have at least one or two unbuilt kits kind of in yes. a cupboard or, or somewhere because you'll buy you know you'll buy a bulk of stuff so it'll be like a battle force or something like that and you'll build up the things you want and then a few bits will sit on the wayside or you'll yeah. buy a couple of things and so you'll just forget about something so for me it's i've got a few necromunda gangs that still need to be uh, built up and i think maybe the uh, the new set coming mm-hmm. out is is perhaps the the motivation i need to to dig them out and, and build them up although it's going to mean yeah. i'm going to have a shed ton of Escher built up because i've got like three gangs of them from different that's awesome though. different sources yeah i'm planning my plan pretty much for my necromunda gangs because nobody plays it uh, but i love the aesthetic and I love the game in principle and it's the thing is it's, it's one of those games that it's always there you know it's not going to go anywhere it's like you can mm-hmm. still go and play more time even though mm-hmm. that's like 20 plus years old now um, because it's once it's all done it's done right and you can use old models you can use new models old models and Necromunda is a bit like that as well so at least having those gangs built up and then even potentially painted means they're, they're, you can always go back and play Necromunda as long as you've got the, the rules and the dice and things. So I'm thinking I might actually uh, do my Necromunda stuff, but I'm going to paint it all Gene Steel Occultist and have it all as an extension of ah. my Gene Steel Occultist. So gangs that potentially live on the same world and have adopted the... have been united by the theology of the... Uh, the four-armed emperor, as the uh, the gene stealers call him. Mm, yes. Speaking of which, have you did, did you get a chance to read the new codex yet? Not beyond my my cursory read through. No, uh, I had a, a bit of a, a manic week this week. Despite it being very quiet, it's been quite busy in a weird way, uh, which is counterintuitive. I realise uh, <laughs> it's, it's weird because quiet for me is like still busy. It's kind of mm. like I'm still running like three games a week and I'm still playing in a couple of games and, and things like that. Um, and then like quiet is when my free nights are, are actually free rather than full, but they're, they're kind of uh, a bit of both at the moment, but no, I've, I've been a bit busy and I keep getting distracted by TV shows. I'm not going to lie. Like I've been like really absorbed. It's like so much TV recently. Like I was, um, what was it? I was, I was sitting down yesterday and I was like, I was on my lunch break and I thought I'll just pop some on while I eat my mm-hmm. egg sandwich because I fancied an egg sandwich. We're going really off gaming topics here, folks. We don't have a lot tonight yeah. in case you're not picking up on it. <laughs> so, Shh. Get, Shh! They might never have cottoned on. Get ready for the Tom and Josh stories, right? Yeah. Uh, sitting down my, my egg sandwich and I was flicking through Disney Plus and they've, they've got a show on there called Pam and Tommy which is about uh, Pamela Anderson and Tommy Lee. Um, yeah, I've seen this being advertised so for I, specifically about the sex tape being the leaked. sex tape scandal. Yeah, so yeah. I popped that on, and it's really good. Like I've completely, completely drawn into it. Yeah, I've been kind of not binge watching it, but I like watched that at lunchtime. Then I watched another like two episodes after, and then another episode at lunchtime today. Is the tone qu- like quite sympathetic to the two of them? It's kind of it's interesting actually because it's got sort of. I don't want to spoil anything uh, from the actual show. Like, obviously, the, the, the plot I was itself is... Say, I think everyone knows what happens. Yeah, you know what happens, but it's more about, like, the motivations behind it and how it impacts them and stuff like that. So it's, it's an interesting one because it does play... 
uh, them as quite sympathetic, at least in the context of the sex tip. Tommy mm. Lee, at least from the outset, is not a sympathetic character. He's, he's a bit of a, an ass. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, he's a rock star, right? He's, and he's, he's portrayed in that kind of light. I'd say Pamela Anderson is certainly portrayed a lot more sympathetically uh, in it. But even the character who, who steals and releases the sex tape, who's played amazingly by Seth uh, Rogen, who I love mm. as an actor and as a director and a creator. He's, I'm a big fan of his work in general. Um, mm. He's Even though he's playing a villain in you know uh, that sense, he's actually very sympathetic and you, you see a lot of like his his rationale for his actions and mm. kind of his his thought process. So it's it's interesting, but I was, I was reading an article about it yesterday that says, you know, even though this show is portraying the situation sympathetically, Pamela Anderson didn't want this show to be made. Now, I, I this was something I was going to say because I, I, I remember reading this recently that she's... And I can totally understand why. I mean, I, I think at the time... Because this was new at the time. Yeah. Like this, I don't, I don't recall that. I'm sure there have been other like scandals similar to it before this, but this is like the first it's scandal the big, of its type one. in my yeah. yeah in my memory. This is an actual crime nowadays. Yeah. Like, there's a specific crime for like releasing that kind of footage against someone's permission, mm-hmm. but that didn't exist like back in the. Well, I'm sure it fell under a different type of crime, but it was it certainly wasn't as widely thought of and I think it was kind of if I recall correctly at the time it was kind of considered a bit of a laugh and a bit of a joke but I think if it happened today then it would be treated a bit like very differently in the media and for good reason as well like this is ultimately what they've done is like quite a normal part like a normal thing for a lot of couples to do right and they've had like their privacy invaded massively yeah yeah massively so so. and and, uh, it you've got to kind of feel for it and it's kind of conflicting because you're watching the show and you're like this is this is a, a, a i don't want to say it's a send-up because it's not a send-up because it is sympathetic but this is a retelling of probably arguably some of the worst moments of somebody's life yeah that has been done without their permission which is exactly the same thing as what it is based about and i'm like this yeah. is and from disney as well like i was like this is a show about a sex scandal on Disney Plus, and I know it's on Star, which is part of Disney Plus, but I was just like, it, it baffles the mind. But all that said, it is a really good show. And like, if if they had almost detached it from the real life people and made it caricatures, you know, and given them different names and things, I'm not saying it would have been better, but it might have been a bit more sensitive. Yeah, I, I remember though, like, because people have tried that approach with different things. Like, there's a film called Last Days, which mm-hmm. is not about Kurt Cobain and the days leading up to his suicide. Wink. Right, okay. Um, it's a rubbish film, by the way. Nothing happens. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, people have tried that approach, and it's like so thinly veiled it's like well you may as well have just said it was who it was supposed to be yeah no Um, i I get that i just i suppose it's just it's tricky right it's the same i watched uh bohemian rhapsody for the first time the other day right and i was like it's it's a good film right it's a great film uh and i i'm quite a big queen fan um but like for people who are still alive from queen and and related to like people in queen you know uh freddie mercury's ex-wife and brian may and all that must mm-hmm. be hard, man. It, like seeing something you experienced that's obviously going to be quite a painful memory. You know, obviously Freddie Mercury getting AIDS, his subsequent death. You know the, yeah. the troubles they did have in the band. However true whatever's in the film it is, or or is inflated to be. You know, I mean, I wouldn't want someone to to like say. You know, one of my friends cocked it. I wouldn't want a, a video. I mean, it'd be pretty boring to be honest for everyone I know. But still, I wouldn't want a film made of it. I'm not. That's not a knock on people speak, I know. Speak for right? yourself, Tom. <laughs> I'm just I saying... think the Josh Hartley story would be riveting. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not bashing. You know, we everyone's the the hero of their own story, and that and that's fine. But by the same measure, you know, <laughs> not everyone's hero story is that interesting. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? Like that's you know, not everybody's Freddie yeah. Mercury, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why people like him are so interesting and, and get these kinds of films uh, made about them. But yeah, that uh, 
to, to get back uh, even remotely on topic, probably not going to, but I'll try. No, uh, I th- I, I, to be honest, I'm, I'm thinking to myself as we're having, the, as we're recording this, I'm just labelling this off topic. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just leaning into it. Today's <laughs> like, episode is called the Ramblings of Josh and Tom. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's kind of just my perspective on it. But I, I, I mean, obviously, there's been other sort of geekier stuff I've been watching. So uh, we've had a new. Book of Boba Fett, which has been a big mm. so that's been really big in the uh, the Star Wars fandom. For I've time. watched Vox Machina. You watched Vox Machina? Oh, you watched it on Saturday yeah. with your review. I party. had my watch party for it. Yeah, absolutely loved it. Yeah. Um, guys, uh, we're going to discuss plot spoilers, so this is your opportunity to stop listening now, and you'll you can hop in w- uh, at the timestamp when it's safe to do so. I was not emotionally ready to see a gnome fucking uh, within the first five minutes of the show. Uh, that that really took me by surprise. <laughs> yeah, I I, w- I will admit, like obviously, I I watched uh, the original the original show, right? The original mm-hmm. Critical Role series, and you knew the kind of character that that Scanlan was, um, and I didn't. I knew it was going to be adult. Because they told us, you know, we're going to be true to the, the origins and that. I did not expect it to be a as gory as it was, or b as literally visceral with its sex content as it is. And I mean, it's not quite pornographic, but it's for a cartoon. There's T and A. Yeah, like there's T and A. There's T A and B. In fact, yeah, yeah. You get you get you you get a little. Bl- brief glimpse of a, a gnome's uh, nance. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. it's uh, and I apologise if you're listening at work and you, your manager comes over when someone says gnomish balls. By the way, but uh, there's, a, there's a lesson to be learned there. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, that did catch me off guard. Um, I've been sort of uh, chatting back and forth with with Ryan about uh, the episodes because obviously we saw the the initial two and then we saw the the third one on Friday mm. and we'll have a new one tomorrow because uh, we're recording on Thursday a new three in fact um, yeah. it's, it's it's really good for the fans uh, we've kind of done a bit of a deeper dive into it for, for the super nerds and there's loads of little references to things from the show and from the uh, the late series as well like for mm-hmm. example in in series two of, uh, of Critical Role there's a book, uh, uh, a erotic novel called Tusk Glove that gets just offhandedly becomes a joke and then becomes referenced all the way through it. And yeah. in the scene in Gilmore's shop, you can see a copy of Tusk Glove Tusk on Glove. the shelf, which is is genius. The other thing as well that I really like, and and this has kind of come out in the fandom, is in every episode so far, there's been an NPC that looks like Matt Mercer that is voiced yeah. by Matt Mercer. I know. Uh, I noticed that as well. And what so. I really like about that is he didn't know the animators were going to make them look like him. He knew he was voicing them, but then it was a little like they did it as like a little kind of in joke for him to have. Like, right. They they put those characters in and made them look all a bit all look like Matt Mercer. So we think that it's going to be a running thing that every episode there'll be a background NPC that looks like Matt Mercer, which is a really yes. nice touch. So now there's become a Where's Mercer. Mercer. Uh, sort of Where's Wally ripoff as well, <laughs> uh, which is a really nice touch. My my favourite of the three was the third episode. Uh, I'm really excited to see how the so the third episode sets up a plot line all about. Um, forgive me, the name of the vampiric couple, Briar Woods. the Briarwoods. Yeah. yeah. So um, so what you've got basically is the the first two episodes were what the Kickstarter was. So the Kickstarter, when it was when it was originally sort of put out, was we're going to make a an an hour long, uh, basically animated show that we can shop around, and we're going to make that mm-hmm. show based on something that happens before the before the Critical Role show started. Because Critical mm-hmm. Role season one starts in a really weird place. If you ever watch it, like the first episode starts with them midway through kind of an adventure. Because basically, Geek and Sundry went out to, to Critical Role. Uh, Felicia Day said to Matt Mercer, we want you to come on, uh, bring your, your home game, which there'd been mm-hmm. some like kind of clips on the internet of them playing, just that they'd filmed at Mercer's home. Uh, bring that on to Geek and Sundry and just carry on your game. 
So Mercer brought it on. They actually switched from the Pathfinder rule set to the D and D rule set in that that sort of transition, mm-hmm. and it just continued on. So there's a whole chunk of Vox Machina's storyline that, that people just never saw for for ages, and they've kind of touched on that with like they did the Vox Machina Origins graphic novels that kind of mm-hmm. touch on some of that, and then they said we're going to make the Kickstarter show actually be something. So that's why that bit that you see is basically something that was never shown in the comics to my knowledge anyway and Mm -hmm. the uh the the show the live show uh then when it exploded they said well because the bright it's called the briarwood arc which is basically percy's uh narrative was uh was so well received it was always kind of considered the best arc of of season one um that's why they picked that up so it, i think it's going to be amazing and i think it what's really cool kind of going back to to fans deep diving there's been a lot of videos that have been released on youtube now where fans have taken scenes from the cartoon and put them alongside the live action scenes they, they respond to so like oh. the bit where and again this is spoiler territory just in case you haven't left by now and you're ruined uh the bit where oh uh, no it tom it's on them now it's on you okay it's on them now the the bit where percy has uh the guy on the floor the coachman mm. that is uh although some of the circumstances have changed that is pretty much blow for blow what happens where he has the guy on the floor and he blows three and and in the actual live action mercer says you blow three of his fingers off which is what you see happen uh, yeah. in the episode and like all the because when i watched that i was like holy shit that's that's visceral and that's the reaction the crew have as well when they're when they're playing that game uh i'm i'm super excited about it. I, know, I know i said last week i was but uh i think it's going to be i think it's going to be really really strong uh, mm-hmm. really strong so a, co- a couple of other things i just wanted to touch on with while we're on this um obviously i, I said previously when we were talking about it i i have not watched Critical Role. Mm-hmm. I still really enjoyed it, just from the point of view of someone who loves Dungeons and & Dragons and role-playing games in general. I was playing a little bit of um, Guess the guess the Class for all okay. of the characters. I managed to get all of them apart from Percy. Okay. And I understand that he, his is a homebrew class. So Percy so, was... He's basically, at least at the very start, he's a fighter with kind of a, a gun and a few mm. special... I don't want to spoil things for you uh, because there's stuff coming that you will find out about Percy. That, sure. Uh, but there's a few tweaks in there. And then as the show went on, Mercer and um, Talison worked together to kind of build him a class out of it kind of thing and, sure. and tweak it. And a few times he did kind of break a little bit and they had to dial him back. Uh, as is often the case if you have a home brewer a class it's, it's very difficult to balance mm-hmm. uh if you don't have the the sort of professional acumen of of knowing how it works uh yeah. so yeah that that was uh that was interesting i think i want to kind of ask you a question about it actually so sure coming into it obviously you have a a very tenuous knowledge of, of the critical role storyline right from kind of what you probably heard people talking about and artwork and things like that that have floated maybe I mean, I, I I I couldn't tell you any of the major plot points. So did you but... find it? Did you did you go into it? And as you were watching it, were you like, I understand this. I get these characters. I understand what's going on. Or were there any bits where you were just like, what what like what the, what's happening? No, I, it 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 was in terms of it, it was easy to follow. Yeah, and I and I, when I say this, I mean this in the nicest possible way. The characters, I, I should have said. Like, I got all of those other classes because, in a lot of respects, those characters play very much into the archetypes of those class, mm-hmm. those classes. So, like, it, it's quite... Like, the, um, Grog, the... Uh, I'm assuming Goliath Barbarian. They don't outright say he's a Goliath, That's but right. he's a big grey dude. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, behaves much as I would anticipate a Goliath Barbarian to behave. Mm-hmm. So, it's... Because they do that, it is quite easy to go, okay, this is so-and-so, that's so-and-so, and and this is... I can make some assumptions about what their motives are. It's actually... Percy, again, is probably one of the most ambiguous Mm -hmm. in in that, and probably by design as well, uh, I'm I'm assuming. So, no... You learn uh, a lot about him as the the story goes on. 
intention. Yeah. So no, I, I, I like I didn't struggle to follow what was, they established. Right, this is this uh, fic- fictional realm that we're set in, so you kind of get an idea yeah. on where we are, and they do that um, that thing that a lot of good storytelling do is show don't tell. Like they they drop hints about what the wider world is like without explicitly turning around to the camera and saying ah yes and da, 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 da. so uh, which I like and I'm sure there'll be more of that as we go on and I'll I'll, I'll start to learn what this world is like yeah. as I'm watching this uh, series as well. Um, but the, another thing I was going to point out, or well, one of the folks watching this was Jack, and Jack doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons, has never watched Critical Role. Um, and uh, apart from the fact that his partner Seb plays Dungeons and Dragons, doesn't really have any grounding as to what it is or anything. And he really enjoyed it as well. So I think that's testament to how well written and put together this is as a as, as you know a bit of media. That's good. That's really good to hear. I think that's that's the one thing I'm kind of interested in because I can't see it that way. I just don't yeah, have that. You- that perception anymore you can't you can't step away yeah. from, you you can't men in black yourself yeah. and like forget watching critical role yeah which is 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 it's interesting in itself but it's 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 good to hear that because that was kind of the, i i felt it would be but you just don't know you know you can't see it through someone else's mm. eyes um as, as much as you try the one thing that did really stand out for me across all of the episodes uh is i love scanlon's musical bits like i absolutely adore them like some people have said they kind of take them out of it a little bit but i thought they were great like i love the song in the no first yeah i i i think they work and i think that that works for scanlon's character as well i was i always feel like scanlon's a bit of a deadpool yeah for for this but like, was. If there's... like this this is the thing like in the show scanlon was really meta and like he sang modern day pop songs mm-hmm. in as his body and they can't do that obviously in the show but yes. in the, in in the live action <laughs> show, he would sing riffs on modern day pop songs, uh, and you know even like really random like rock and stuff as well, um, which was is, is meta because th- they would exist in that universe, you know. <laughs> uh, and and um, Sam, who plays Scanlan, is also just a very meta player because Sam is is one of the players that wasn't a D and D player. Uh, until right. that group formed, he he was close friends with Liam, who is the guy who voices uh, Vax, the rogue, mm-hmm. the elf rogue, uh, the obvious rogue, the, the, the second edge lord, right? Uh, he uh, and Sam said to Liam, uh, and there's actually really interesting. Before Critical Role ever happened, Liam and Sam had a podcast, and on mm-hmm. that podcast, they actually talk about a D and D game they're going to play. Which is really fun to like listen to now. Wow, after what's happened? And Sam says to Liam, "Oh, you know what should I, what should I play? What's like the stupidest thing I can play?" Because Sam's a really goofball, like high energy person. Uh, and Liam says, "Oh, you know you should play a norm bard." And Sam's like, yes. I have "No idea what that is, but okay." And then. Scanlan's there it is. There's the origin story right yeah. there, <laughs> which is great. You know, I love these these kinds of random things. I I really like just from a lifestyle perspective and, and kind of a, almost philosophy perspective. I like when these random things that happen in your life or other people's lives lead to grander things. You know, mm. on a personal level, or you know, you could go to things like you know, accidentally meeting your your uh, spouse and your meet cutes and stuff like that. Um, but just like even like a good example for us is like I randomly invited Scott to play D and D with us. I didn't know Scott from Adam. He was a guy at yeah. the Games Workshop and was kind of friendly with other people. A few years later, I was best man at his wedding. You know these things. It's it's interesting how how minor choices and minor actions, much like Sam and Liam, the decision for the the Norm Bard, lead to grander things down the line. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, God. Uh, thinking about it like so many of my close friends have met through like just incidental decisions i've made through like gaming stuff like you know i i met you because i went into a games workshop in carlisle and bought something from you so and now you are probably dread fleet probably dread fleet long suffering co-host after you were forced into buying a dread fleet (laughs) 
That's something I could paint. Actually, I think I think all of those pieces are primed. I haven't looked in that box in years. I actually think uh, I, I don't think our first meeting was dreadfully. I actually I very vaguely remember our first couple of encounters because you came in and you were. I don't know if you were new into building undead or you were getting back into it. I can't quite remember, but you will have been getting back. Yeah, you were because, doing undead, and yeah. you came in, and I think you. We're either looking for some advice, building something or painting something. It wasn't gaming related. It was, it was sort of the the hobby side of it. Uh, and Lewis, who was my manager in Games Workshop, asked me to 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 deal with you for want of a better word. Uh, he was like, "Can you go and help that guy?" Uh, and I went and I helped you with some undead stuff. Uh, and then you came back for a game. I think the following week, because mm-hmm. we had the game in Thursdays. And then I kind of got talking to you. And I still, to be honest, I didn't even know you that well while I was in Carlisle. It was actually, I, I left Carlisle and I had a leaving do and you came to it. And we kind of, we were we were friendly, but you were a customer and I was a, an yeah, employee. Yeah. You came to my leaving do when I left Carlisle. And I probably got to know you more at my leaving do than I had done when I lived in Carlisle. And then I bumped into you really randomly in Glasgow train yeah, station. Yeah, we, 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 we bumped into each other in Central Station in Glasgow. And I think we both said almost at the same time, what the hell are you doing yeah. here? <laughs> like, and it turned out we'd both moved up to Glasgow. Uh, yeah. Not that far. I think you'd moved a, a couple of months prior. Uh, and I literally just moved up like a week beforehand. Um so it's just you know these little random things that happen, and then from you I met Ben, and it all spiraled and, and it's cascaded out of control. Yeah, and, and here we are. Uh, so there's, yeah. there's the origin of, of Tom and Josh for you as well. Uh, in your your little uh, little epic. There you go. You can make a movie about that. There you go, buddy. There you go. There we are. Excellent. There's Excellent. It could be like a a, a romantic a, a bromantic comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Tom and Josh. A true bromance. Yeah, there we go. That's, of that's... serendipity. Oh. <laughs> My mum loves that film. I love that film. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a sucker for John Cusack. I, I yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there anything else to say on Vox Machina before we bring the episode to a close? Other than I'm I'm very excited for the Brywood uh, arc and we're, we're no doubt going to talk about it in, in the podcast for the next few... Because we've got, what, four more weeks of releases for it? Uh, Twelve episodes, so three more. Oh, so three more three, three more, more weeks. Episodes, yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're almost certainly going to be talking about it for the next month or so. So, so buckle up. <laughs> hope you I, like it. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, before we sign off, uh, shall, do, do you want to uh, do the Patreon piece? Yeah, yeah, sure. So... Uh, we have a Patreon. Um, there, we go. there we go. That's the Patreon piece. <laughs> so, so as as we've said uh, on previous episodes, you know we're we are a little podcast. Uh, we we we're self funded, uh, and your contributions via our Patreon are greatly appreciated. Uh, help us keep the lights on, keep doing what we're doing, keep talking about random crap. I mean, if we don't do it on mic, we'll just do it off mic. So it's, you know, it's for everyone's benefit that it gets recorded for prosperity. Absolutely. Uh, otherwise, you know, when I become famous uh, in a couple of years, uh, the Sun newspaper won't be able to pull podcasts of me talking about myself in a sailor outfit. So <laughs> do... Uh... <laughs> if that's the worst scandal in your life, you're probably doing all right. It's not. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know it's not. <laughs> so yeah, do uh, do support us on Patreon. Uh even as much as a, a dollar, pound, whatever uh, the currency it decides to take from you, uh, it is appreciated. It, it all goes towards uh, equipment and uh, and the subscriptions. So yeah, support us on Patreon. Yeah, thanks. And like like, like we said on a previous episode, we we used the funds to to buy uh, Tom a new microphone earlier this year, and which is why he's uh, sounding tip top. Yep. So if I may say so. Really helps tip-top. with my uh, side ASMR gig as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have one. <laughs> Just in case. Subscribe to Tom's OnlyFans for that. Um, right, on the note of your OnlyFans, I, I think we ought to bring this episode to a close. So, uh, dear listener, thank you as always for tuning in. And until next time, take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>